Hi, welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor in Montgomery, Alabama. The pastor and founder is Vince Rizal. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Austin III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today's sermon and lesson will be on signs and wonders. You know, in the Old Testament, there are a lot of signs and wonders that God used because the word sign in Hebrew is oath, meaning to send a signal. And the word wonder in the Hebrew is mofe. Oh, to bring a miracle. And we know that Jesus was the sign of wonder for our salvation now, wasn't he? So sit back, get a paper and pencil, and be ready for a mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless you. <laughs> All right, everybody go to Hebrews. Everybody go to Hebrews chapter two. And uh, before we pray, let us read these first five verses. Hebrews two one through five, and it says, "Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip." I like that. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense a reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles. The word divers means many, many miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that everybody had a blessed holiday, a blessed Thanksgiving, and we know that Christmas is on its way. Uh, let your speaker be edifying and establishing, building, guiding, and correcting the righteousness of your people of God. Let me decrease so that they may increase and that you may increase. And let me walk in the word of your word to get more understanding and more revelation by illuminating your word. In Jesus' name I pray and let the house say amen. Amen. Now as you look at verse 4, you will see in verse 4 of Hebrews 2, it says, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders. Now we're going to be talking about signs and wonders a lot this year. And the reason why I want to bring that up, I actually wrote this sermon way back in 2004. Because God always gives you a message, and I'm the kind of person that I was taught that if God gives you something, keep a paper or pencil near you, and just write it down. Don't trust your memory. So one night I was sleeping, and something came to be signs and wonders, and I wrote down signs and wonders, woke up the next morning, and began to look it up in the Hebrew and Greek. And this is what came out of it. The word sign is the Hebrew word off, off, which means a signal. And then when I looked up the Hebrew word for wonders, it's the Hebrew word mofe. Y'all see how it goes? Mofe. So I said, okay. So that meant when, they, when God said, I'm sending you signs and wonders, he was sending you a signal to get what? Mofe. So every time you see signs and wonders in the Bible, God says, here's a signal for you to get what? Mofe. Amen. Y'all get it. So that's what signs and wonders are. All right? So let's go to John chapter 4. I think I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. That's okay. John chapter 4. St. John chapter 4. <laughs> Believe me, I will say first, second, put third in front of me. But if I just say John, it just means St. John chapter 4. Starting at verse 46. John 4, starting at verse 46. We're going to go all the way to 54. So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at the turning. When he heard that Jesus was coming out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of what? Death. Yeah. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, sir, Come down, Ur, my child died. In other words, come on down here, my child died. Verse 50, Jesus said to them, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word 
that Jesus has spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now coming down, his servant met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend or get better. The word amend means to get better. When did he start getting better? And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed and his what? Whole house. Ooh, that's awesome. His whole house. Verse 54. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Now, the reason why I'm bringing all that out is because, as I said, signs of the Hebrew word oath, which means to send a signal. But also, in the Greek, is the Greek word simeon, signs, or give an indication. All right, y'all hear me? In the Greek, it means to give an indication, or especially something that is supernatural. So every time you see a sign, that's also something that said, here's an indication, but you know it couldn't have been of this world. It had to be something supernatural, right? Uh, the word wonders in the Greek is teros, T-E-R-A-S, right? Wonders is something strange. So that means when you get a sign in one of you're either seeing something supernatural and strange to your eyes or causing the beholder to marvel at. How many things have y'all seen? I remember years ago they talked about during the Civil War they used to see the Northern Lights. You know, you could be down south and see the northern lights, and that was like a miracle to them to see those northern lights. Can't hardly see them today because of pollution. But um, a sign is intended to appeal to the understanding. A wonder appeals to the imagination. A power. Now, the Greek word for power is called dudamus. When Jesus says, I'm giving you power, he says, I'm giving you dudamus. That means dudamus power. Can't nobody give you that kind of power but Jesus, okay? Which indicates his source as being supernatural. But faith is a gift that grows as we use it. So faith is a gift that grows as we use it. So therefore, when you begin to see signs or see a signal that's going to cause you to get what? More faith or begin to make you wonder, then therefore it's going to increase your what? Faith. Because you know it couldn't have been of nothing of this world. You know, there ain't nothing. I was watching something last night. They keep going out to the cosmos. They got numbers now that the scientists can't figure out. They got so many zeros at the end of it. It's infinity. And they said they can't find the end of it because the end of it is gone. It blows my mind how these scientists can figure out all this stuff and they can't figure out, you know, they call it the big boom theory. And now they're finding out the smallest minute thing that we can't even see with our natural eye it keeps going and going and that the universe starts from something so microscopically thin that we can't tell. But God allowed them to get that mouse. But here it is, they can't figure out, you're never going to get to the end of it because the end says it had to be God. Amen. Amen. No big boom theory. It was God. <laughs> it's just that simple. I'm sitting at the TV saying, when are they going to figure out this was God? You know? you know. But again, some people are never going to figure it out. Now, in the Old Testament and New Testament, signs and wonders may be classed according to seven somewhat overlapping functions. One, to impart knowledge. When we're talking about to impart knowledge, it means typically characterized as God or typically characterized God as Lord of history a champion of the oppressed. The knowledge imparted by the signs given to Pharaoh in Egypt was to encourage acknowledgement of Yahweh. Everybody know who Yahweh is in the Old Testament, right? Amen. Yahweh as the only God. Obedience to God's covenant and trusting God's word. So if you were obedient to God's covenant and trusting his word, then you saw that through a sign of the wonder which was imparting knowledge to you. So even the knowledge of God is sending a signal for you to get more faith. Amen? Amen? Amen, because God ain't going to impart his knowledge to just what? Only his children. So if you ain't born again, you ain't getting it. Amen. Amen. Then it's also sent to what? To protect. For example, to Mark of Cain. Everybody know the story of Cain and Abel? Yeah. Right? Amen. When he killed Abel, God put a mark on his head. And that was to let everybody know not to touch him. But the strange thing is, all those other false nations came out of him. Every other generation came out of him. Out of Cain's generation. Amen. So, the mark of Cain and the blood upon the doorpost at the Passover protected those under the sign. Me and a friend of mine were discussing these signs and wonders because they were saying, you know, there are people who are still claiming the blood. Fine, that's what you want to do. You know, you know, in prayer, you hear people, I claim the blood for this, I claim the blood for that. And we were having this big old argument about do you claim the blood over your home and properties and children? I said, well, he said he can't understand that the blood protects. 
You know, he couldn't see the differences. And I was saying in the Old Testament, the blood didn't protect him. Because if those kids weren't behind that door, covered with the blood of that lamb, the angel of death came in and killed all the firstborn. So that blood didn't protect him. And what did they call that back then? The Passover. And they still celebrate that today. But I said, let's stop all this argument about the blood because Jesus shed his blood once and for all. He was the last, last unblemished lamb. When he shed his blood 2,000 years ago, it protected all those that call upon the name of Jesus. And so, boom, you ain't got to claim it no more. It's been done for you once and for all. Amen. You know, but you hear religious folks talking about, I claim the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I do all this stuff. Well, I mean, that's what it is. I don't plead the blood on nothing. The blood already covered. Past, present, and future. Amen? Amen. So I said, why don't you start talking to people and say, well, those people in the Old Testament and Jewish faith, they still believe in the Passover. What do we believe in today? What is the same equivalent in the New Testament that's in the Old Testament Passover? Y'all know what it is? Easter. 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 You know why? Because now he is risen. So that's our Passover. Easter. We don't claim the blood. We claim the fact that he's alive. Amen? See, ain't that more rejoiceful? Didn't worry about, why well, claim the risen blood of Christ? Hey, <laughs> he's risen. All right. So we had that big old debate. So, but I said, here, is it a prerequisite for salvation? If it's not a prerequisite for salvation, move on. If, it, if, it's, not a, if it's not a question of heaven and hell, move on. If it's a question we can take to the Lord and just his life just fine. But I don't only worry about whether or not it sends you to hell or not. Whether or not it's going to send you to heaven or not. I don't care about all that crap. You know, it's great enlightenment, but the point is, is it a prerequisite for salvation? Does it save you whether or not I pour a blood on your door post or not? But which one saves you? Because he said, confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the what? Dead, and thou shalt be what? Saved. Amen. There you go. Amen. So, the blood does protect, but it did it 2,000 years ago. Number three, to motivate your faith. So signs and wonders also motivate you in faith. The signs fulfill their goal when they are inspired by obedience, worship, and loyalty to the Lord. So when those signs cause you to be obey God, right, and begin to make you worship God, but a lot of people don't want to break down and worship God until they're going through some mess. They don't call on his name and begin to be loyal until they're going through hell. You know, that's a good time to do it, but why wait to then? Amen. You know, why aren't you doing that when you're going through good times? <laughs> then, when the bad times come, you know exactly what to do. You know, you know exactly what to do. Amen. Then it also, Signs and Wonders does this, to recall significant events. One of the ways that they did that in the Old Testament was what? The eating of the unleavened bread at the Passover, which we just talked about. That's in Exodus 13.9. And the redemption of the firstborn. That's in Exodus 13.16. Are reminders of God's liberation of Israel. So, every time they think about God's signs and wonders, or his signal to give them more faith, they always do that. Even today, Jewish people remember what happened back in Moses' day because they're what? On the law books. They're in the law. They have not accepted grace. That's why Jesus in Revelation is going to give them an opportunity again. I don't want to get into eschatology, but the Jewish people will have an opportunity again to accept Jesus. So if you've got a problem with Jewish people, you've got a problem with Christians. Hello, I need to say that. Jews are God's still chosen people, whether you want to believe it or not. And he's going to give them every opportunity to accept the Messiah as Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior. So if you got a problem with Jewish folk, better wake up. They're going to have every opportunity. They're still God's chosen people. Amen? Amen. Amen. I had to put that out there. Because there are some people who say Jews, you know, they killed Jesus and all that kind of crap. I'm telling you, they are still God's chosen people. Amen. Whether you like it or not. Amen. All right. All right, number five, to witness to the covenant. This serves as a reminder of the covenant or established relationship. For example, the rainbow within Noah, circumcision within Abraham, and the Sabbath with Moses. When was the rainbow in Noah? Anybody know? After the flood, there was a bow in the sky. That was the rainbow. And every time you see a rainbow today, that's a reminder from God to you to say, I'll never destroy the earth with water again. So when y'all walk in, y'all see a beautiful rainbow, that's God's promise telling you, I'm not going to keep you by water again. I'm not going to destroy the world with water again. And then Abraham with the blood covered in the circumcision, foreskin of a man, cutting him up. Amen? Ain't going to get too deep in that one. Still makes me squint. <laughs> and then, uh, then the Sabbath with Moses, when he said the Ten Commandments, he said, you know, you worship on the Sabbath day. Amen? All right. 
Finally, to confirm, now here's a good one for me, to confirm such signs often authenticate God's special call, as for Moses, Gideon, and Saul. Now, to confirm means this, how many of you think you've got a gift and a call in God? Amen. I mean, whether to preach, teach, um, serve in the church, believe me, those signs and wonders can confirm it for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, you ain't no way in the world. You could have told me over 20 years ago that I'd be standing here preaching, you know, because I didn't get born again until I was 33, and all the hell I, I, phew, I lived through, and then all of a sudden I'm standing here preaching the word of God. Ain't no way in the world. You would have told me I was doing that. So that's definitely a sign and a wonder. Shut That was a true signal with no faith to see Warren standing up here preaching. But it will confirm your call, okay? Elsewhere, a sign confirms God's word of judgment or promise of healing. Amen. That's another reason why you see a lot of healings in the Bible. That's confirming to you with a sign or a signal that tells you to get more faith. How many people that you walk up to and said, that faith has made me whole? Amen. Wasn't that a sign you, wow, Jesus could do it. You was blind, but now I see. Amen. Who else would you go, oh, did he raise that boy up from the dead? Boy, if that ain't a wonder, I don't know what is. Can you raise somebody from the dead? You should say yes. You should have enough faith to want to try and do it. Amen. I remember I seen a, a, a documentary over in Africa where the man rose up from the dead. Now, I would have thought it was funny, but it was so much evidence in that documentary because don't they from third world countries? They've got a belief in clean water. We worry about these little trivial things here in America because we have it so easy, believe it or not. Even sitting in this room, even in this homeless shelter, and sitting in this homeless shelter, y'all know how rich you are. Amen. You really don't know how rich and blessed you are to be sitting in here right now. Right. Some people are fighting and dying over one sheet of the Bible and, and being murdered because they're carrying high this one sheet of the Bible. Amen. And here you are, you carry the whole Bible. Pick up one meantime time you want to. And they would get killed if they got caught with one piece of paper of the Bible. Mm. Amen. Look how blessed you are. So, for me to watch that video and see this man rise up from the dead and have the doctor there, the mortician there, I mean, they involved him too. So I said, wait, didn't blood have to be inside him for the rise up? Nothing's impossible with God. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. Nothing is impossible with God. So, watch that man and you saw the, the plugs where they plugged him in. And where they had put the embalming fluid and all that stuff in him. Go ahead, Emmett. You just asked me a question when you get the embalming fluid. He had been embalmed. That was all in Huh? He Jimmy? had been embalmed. All his body fluid had all been drained out of him. Right. Oh, did you see that too? No, I'm asking. Oh, okay. Yeah, but everything had been drained out of him. And yet, he still got up. And he rose up in the church where people were praying on him. But that blew my mind. But it increased my faith. My skeptability would have said, nah, that ain't real. Because I don't saw too many phony preachers here doing mm -hmm. signs and wonders. We're going to look at some of this in a minute. Right. Too many phony preachers here passing you a little water to them and saying, believe on this. Send me a thousand dollars and you shall be healed. Mm -hmm. And all that kind of stuff. Or send me a napkin, touch and agree with me. Mm -hmm. So that can deplete your faith. So when you see a real miracle, it's kind of hard for you to believe. Right. You know what I mean? But if you stay in the word of God, believe me, your faith will increase. Especially if you begin to look at your own life and know that couldn't have been nobody else but God that did that for you, right? Amen. Amen. Couldn't have been. All right. It also does this, the final one. Now I have a hard time with this guy's son's name, but I'm going to try it. I was on the internet trying to get his name out there. All right. The final seventh one is to illustrate by means of prophetic action. The names of Isaiah's sons. The names of Isaiah. Isaiah's name means Yahweh is salvation. And his sons, Shereshahab. And his name means a remnant shall return and mess his shop up. Now don't get me, boy. I'm glad I didn't write about that. <laughs> you can look at Isaiah 7 and 3 and Isaiah 8 and 3 and see the two sons' names. And I was on the internet. How do you say that again? Bashan Bashan I couldn't say it. I ain't, you know. Amen. But his two sons, his two sons that mess his shop up, the spoil speeds and the prey hastens, illustrates Israel's fate. <laughs> Isaiah's walking naked and barefoot for three years illustrates the coming of annihilation of Egypt and Ethiopia. Could you imagine that man walking around buck naked for three years? Three years. Woo! He was buck naked for three years. <laughs> he tried that now, boy, he's going to jail. <laughs> there ain't no doubt. <laughs> then you have what? Ezekiel likewise illustrated the coming of siege of Jerusalem using a brick, earth, and a plate. That's in the, uh, Ezekiel 4, 1 through 3. 
Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. And then we're going to get some general precepts and instructions uh, that we should be giving our children concerning signs and wonders. Amen? Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm trying to edify today. I said, Lord, this might be a little bit too meaty for them, but the Lord told me to get it. Amen. See, after a while, man of God, especially when I look at a lot of faces I've been looking at, I've been here almost two years now, and a lot of y'all I know pretty well. Some of y'all I slept in here with him when I was standing. Amen? Amen. Y'all should be up to par to be ready for some meat. Amen? Amen. But I can't keep giving milk if you don't want meat. Because after a while, the people who want meat are going to be like, where's my meat? I don't drink milk. I got black toast intolerant. Amen. You know, I am. I need some meat now. So I got to start giving a balance. And I want to give a balance. Amen? Deuteronomy 6, we're going to look at it, starting at verse 17. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sweared unto his fathers, mm. to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord has spoken. So you can cast out your enemies. Come on. And when thy son asketh thee in a time to come, saying, What means the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. So you see how he's teaching his kids this. See, whatever you're going through, you're supposed to remind your children of what God has done for you. You're supposed to remind your brothers and sisters what God has done for you. Especially if you know it was him that brought you out. You are not going to steal God's glory and think you're going to get away with it. Amen. I just want to take a pause there. How many of you want to teach your kids about your, you know, don't everybody have a family with a legacy? You got somebody's last name. Don't you want to talk about that family of yours that you came out of? It ain't, it ain't got to be Christian. But you still want them to carry that family name. Every man I ever known always wanted a son. Amen. Who didn't want a son? If I was going to have any kids, I wanted a son to do what? Carry on my name. Because without a son, your D, I mean your C and your DNA dies. You stop to exist. Amen. Women cannot give DNA. Amen. Amen. They're incubators. Right. The only way the DNA carries is through the son. So if you only got daughters, it's done. Yep. That's what I have. Nothing but a daughter. So when she marry a man, and then his seed carries on through her. But not mine, it's dies. Amen. But every man, that's why every man always wants a son. Amen. Verse 22. And the Lord saw of signs and wonders. The Lord saw of a signal with no faith. Great and sore unto Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. You remember that was the plagues. See, he's telling them about what they've been brought out of. Because God sent all these plagues upon Egypt to get them to wake up. They did, <laughs> they did wake up. We know, we know the result of that, right? Verse 23. And he, and he brought us out from this, and he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive. We're going to come back to that. As it is at this day. Verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Go up to verse 22. As you can see right there. That is the original word oath. To send a signal. Right? Because when you are sending a signal, this is what it also means. When you're sending a signal, you're also literally and figuratively, you're also holding up a flag. You're also holding up a beacon. Everybody know what a beacon is, right? You're also putting up a monument. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Mm -hmm. Then watch this. And you're also sending an omen. Now we all know the movie, the omen. But you're also sending an omen. You're also letting them know there's a prodigy. A prodigy. And there's also evidence of it. Amen. So that's what he said. I'm sending a signal with all these things confirming you. And then when he says, mo faith, so I'm sending you a signal to get mo faith, he's also talking about a miracle. 
by implication. Watch this. Amen.